In this session, we're going to talk about power series. So a power series is a series of increasing powers of x that we can use to re-express functions. So if we take the function e to the x, we can rewrite this as 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6 plus an infinitely large number of terms. Okay? Now that is amazing. Very strange, uh, and hopefully by the end of the session you'll be able to do this for any function you choose. So, if I draw a graph of an arbitrary function that looks like this, what these power series can be used for is to say, if I know everything about the function at one point, if I know everything about it there, now what is everything? Well, if I know the function's value, so its y-intercept, if I also know its gradient at that point, its second differential, its third differential, and so on, if I know everything about it, I can reconstruct all of the rest of the function. So if I know everything about it here, I also know everything about it everywhere. Okay? But that is only for a certain type of function that we call well-behaved. So functions that you can differentiate as many times as you want, and they don't have any discontinuities in them. But we know lots of functions like that, so this is a very useful tool. So what we're going to do is try and explain this graphically. Okay, so we're going to develop a sequence of uh, improved approximations to a function. So if we take a function like this, we'll put it up here. If we take a function like this, Okay, and here's our axes, and we're going to draw one that looks like this. Okay, nice function that looks like that. What I'm going to do is try and generate a sequence of uh, approximations to this function, so approximate guess functions, which we will call g of x. So our first guess, our g0 guess, so some function is just going to be using one piece of information. And that one piece of information is uh, our y-intercept, so this value here. Okay? And so if we've only got this one value, or one single value, our guess function obviously can't be very good. And in fact, all it can be is a totally horizontal line. So our guess function just ends up looking like this. Okay? And this line, so the function is f of x, and this line here is just f at the position 0. So this function, everywhere along it, is just the value of the function at this point here, f, uh, x equals 0. So our zeroth order guess is just f of 0, everywhere. Flat line, terrible approximation to this function. Okay, But we can do better. So let's look at our first order approximation g1 of x. So our first order approximation, what we're going to do is now use two pieces of information. So we're going to use the y-intercept at 0, and we're also going to use the gradient at 0, which is, of course, just f dash at 0, f prime at 0. Okay? And if we've got two pieces of information, a y-intercept and a gradient, that's just going to be a straight line. So all straight lines are of the form y equals mx plus c, okay, and we need to know both the gradient and the y-intercept. Well, we know those pieces of information. The gradient is just f prime at 0, and the y-intercept is just f at 0. Okay, so we can just substitute both those pieces of information in, and I'm going to write them this way around, so I'm going to do f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x. So I've written c plus mx rather than mx plus c, and hopefully you'll see why when we go to the next one. So this is our second order approximation now. Okay? So for our second order approximation, we're now going to use three pieces of information. So the y-intercept, the first differential, and the second differential. Okay? So the second differential, double prime, evaluated at zero, so just at that one place. So anything that's got these three pieces of information is going to be a curve of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay? If we take that curve, 
we now just need to find these three coefficients, a, b, and c. Well, what we do is we say, OK, I need, this, I need our new guess to have the correct y-intercept. OK, well, where does the y-intercept occur? At x equals 0. So at x equals 0, this term disappears, this term disappears, and we're just left with c. So c is the y-intercept, and the y-intercept is just f at 0. So we can put that in already. So f at 0. OK. What about this b term here? What's the coefficient in front of our x? Well, we can just write the following. We can say, OK, our guess function had better have the correct first differential. So y prime equals 2ax plus b. But it better have the correct first differential at x equals 0, because we're doing everything around the point x equals 0. So at x equals 0, we find that this function just goes to b. So the gradient of our function is just the coefficient in front of our x term. So we get f prime 0 times x. And we're getting for one more term, which is this a coefficient here. OK? And what we do, same thing again. We'll just differentiate the function again and say, well, our guess function had also now better have the same second differential as the real function, f of x. And if we differentiate this again, we'll just get 2a. Now, this tells us that our second differential, which we know is f double prime at 0, equals twice the coefficient in front of our x squared term. So to get this coefficient, we just say, well, a therefore equals f double prime at 0 divided by 2. OK, so if I just rub these lines out here to make space, the next term in our series equals f double prime at 0 divided by 2 times x squared. OK, so we can now see that each time we've improved our approximation, we can now put these uh, new functions, g1 and g2, onto our graph. So g1 is going to be a line with the same gradient as the function at 0. So it's going to look something like this which is not a fantastic approximation, but it's better than our first one. g2 is going to be something with an x squared in it. So it's going to be a parabola. So it's going to have the, f the correct first differential, the correct y-coordinate, and the correct second differential. So it might well look something like this. OK, so it's going to be parabolic in shape. And this graph gets, to, gets a bit messy by this point. So let's have a look at our third guess function, g3. OK? And that's going to go up to an x cubed term this time. So it's going to be of the form y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. OK? And I hope you've spotted the pattern by now that essentially every time we're going to keep all of the terms that we've already found because they won't change. So once again, if we want to know what d is, well, d is when x equals 0. Uh, and so that's just our y-intercept, which is just going to be f naught. So we can write the first few terms already. So f naught plus f prime naught x plus f double prime naught divided by 2 times x squared plus something. So the way we find that something is we want to know what is this coefficient a. What's going to go in front of our x cubed, which we're going to write here? And the way we isolate that is we say, OK, our guess function had better have the correct first differential. So we get 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. It also better have the correct second differential, which is going to be 6ax plus 2b. And it had also better have the correct third differential. Y, and I'm going to put a little 3 in brackets. Y3, if you're, otherwise you'll get too many of these little dashes, equals 6a. So the third differential of our real function okay, had better be the same as 6 times whatever the coefficient is. Okay? So that means that this should equal f, the third differential of f, evaluated at 0. So we can now say, therefore, a should equal f, power th f third differential at 0 divided by 6, 
which we can write into here. So f little 3 at 0 divided by 6 times x cubed. Right. So just from looking at that pattern, we should now be able to see what's going on. So if we wanted to construct our fourth order guess, so we'll go with g4 of x, OK? So this one would have been a cubic. So if you put it on this graph and it gets very complicated now, it will look something like this, OK? If we now wanted to construct our fourth order guess, it's going to have all of these same terms in it. But it's going to have some kind of x power 4 term at the end. And what you'll see is we've got the differential differentiated the number of times of our same as our power. So the fourth term is going to be f little 4 in brackets evaluated at 0, divided by something, we'll come back to that in a second, multiplied by x to the power of our approximation order. OK, fourth order, fourth power. What's going on under here? OK, so under here is going to be, well, if we go to our same logic again, so this is going to be y uh, equals a x to the power of 4 this time, plus b x to the 3 dot dot dot. We know that the rest of the terms are just going to disappear. If we differentiate this thing four times, OK, once goes to 4ax, twice goes to uh, 4ax cubed, twice goes to 12ax squared, three times goes to 24ax, OK? I hope you can see the pattern. What's gone on each time is that we've had to multiply this coefficient by the exponent each time we differentiate. So this is divided by 2. This is divided by 3 and 2. And this is divided by 4 and 3 and 2. And we call 4 times 3 times 2 4 factorial. 4 factorial. 4 factorial meaning 4, 3, 2. So our nth term, if we had g n of x, would be all the terms, oh, our nth uh, guess function would be all the terms we've got up so far, where the last term would be f differentiated n times and evaluated at 0 divided by n factorial multiplied by x to the power of n. That would be the last term in that series. So we should now be able to construct a general formula for this where we say, OK, our gn of x is going to equal the sum from uh, n equals 0 to n, we'll just clear some space, of the nth differential evaluated at 0 divided by n factorial multiplied by x to the power of n. So this is our general formula for what we call the Maclaurin series. So the Maclaurin series is a power series where we know everything about the function at this one specific point, which is x equals 0. OK? And once we've got that information, like I said, we can use it to reconstruct everything else about the curve as long as it's well behaved. So we'll just quickly do a Maclaurin example. And we're going to use the function y equals cos x. So if we take cos x, we all know what cos x looks like. OK, so we'll leave the general formula up there. So cos x looks like this. OK, cos x goes like this. OK, so here's the function that we're trying to recreate. And we've seen this general formula. So like I said, our first term, cos of x, equals, well, it's the zeroth differential, i.e. just the function itself, evaluated at 0. So what is cos 0? Well, it's just 1. Divided by 0 factorial. Well, 0 factorial is 1. And we'll talk about why that is in a different session. Uh, divided by 1, multiplied by x to the power of 0. Well, anything to the power of 0 is just 1. So we get just 1. So our zeroth order approximation is just a flat line. Oops. It's just a flat line that goes through that point there. OK? Once again, not a good approximation to start with. OK? What about our next term? Well, so we said that 
f at 0 equals 1. What about the differential of cos at 0? Well, the differential of cos at 0 is just minus sine of 0. And sine evaluated at 0 is 0. So there is no term with an x. There is no uh, term in our power series that has x uh, related to it. So if we look at the second differential, differentiate this function again. So cos differentiates to minus sine differentiates to minus cos. Minus cos evaluated at 0, you get minus 1. So it's minus 1 divided by 2 factorial multiplied by x to the power of 2. So minus 1 over 2 times x squared. OK? What about our third order? We put a little 3 in brackets. So differentiate minus cos, we get uh, sine again. So sine 0 is just 0, so that term disappears. F4 is going to be uh, sine differentiates to cos. So we get cos of 0, and that's just 1. So we get this repeating pattern. So this is our fourth order term. So we've got about at 0, so we've got 1 over 4 factorial, 1 over 4 factorial, multiplied by x to the 4. So I hope you can see the pattern now that the next term, there's going to be no x power 5 term, but there will be an x power 6 term, and it's going to be minus 1 over 6 factorial times x to the 6, dot, dot, dot. OK, so it's an infinitely long series to recreate this cos function. OK, and what you'll get is the first term gives you a flat line. Then after that, you get this upside down parabola, because you can see it's a negative parabola. And then you get this x power 4 term, which is going to look like this. OK, and so we have recreated, re-expressed the function cos x in terms of this power series here. So the last thing we're going to talk about on this topic is the Taylor series. And the basic idea here is that for a Maclaurin series, we've said if we know everything about a well-behaved function at x equals 0, then we can reconstruct the whole function. So if we know everything, oh, if we know everything about a function at x equals 0, so here we'll take a function that looks like this, right? any old function that's well-behaved. If we know everything about it here, we can reconstruct the whole function. That's the Maclaurin series. But the Taylor series simply says, if we know everything about the function anywhere, if we know everything about it at any point, let's say the point C here, if we know everything about a well-behaved function at that point there, we can also recreate the whole function, and we end up with just a slightly modified general expression, which is going to be gn equals the sum, again, from n equals 0 to infinity of our function the nth derivative of it, evaluated at our point c now, divided by n factorial again, but this time multiplied by x minus c to the power of n. So it's a very small modification, just generalizes this power series concept so that you can just take any point and use it to reconstruct your function. OK? And in some cases, you end up having to use the Taylor series. And one example of this, rather than the Maclaurin series, and one example of this is trying to find the power series expansion of ln x, the natural logarithm of x. But I'll leave it to you to solve that one.